Paytech, Purely Pam on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope everybody's having a wonderful 4th of July weekend, wherever you're at. Listen, today I'm wearing my dog 4th of July apron because I wanna make everyone aware that during this time of the year, the 4th of July period, Dogs are very sensitive to the sounds, all the fireworks, and also be extra careful when you're around animals and pets. Today, I'm getting ready tonight to go to a friend who is hosting a book club that I'm a member of. We once a month meet at um, someone's house and prepare, and we have hors d'oeuvres, and, and we talk and discuss a book that we have all currently read. Anyway, tonight the book is Zero Fail by Carol Linig, um, and... I went on a trip up to Northern California and uh, Portland and, and Olympia up in that area this last weekend with Frank and we stopped and got some figs. I got these figs in anticipation of making a, a bacon wrapped fig appetizer goat cheese stuff. So we're going to do those today and then I'm going to prepare a little uh, dessert strawberry uh, uh, cream cheese icing and strawberries on top because it's it's fourth of july you have to have strawberry strawberries are necessary anyway follow me today and you'll see what we're going to do how we're going to do it and all enjoy thanks okay i want to show you everything that you'll need of course i've got the figs there some of them are getting ready to you know um go on so i want to get get this appetizer made today um, I'm using maple syrup, and I'll tell you why later on, but it's maple syrup or any kind of syrup if you'd like. Toothpicks, of course, because we're going to have to close them up. I'm going to use a combination of rosemary, garlic, and ground ginger and put in my goat cheese, garlic, and herb mixture that I'm going to stuff these figs with. I've got bacon. I'm going to cut that in half and use the slices, and you'll see how I'm going to do that. And I've got a little brown sugar. And all of these ingredients, most of you have in your cupboards at home, so. Okay, I've split open some of my figs here, cut off the heads, the tops of them, and the bottoms of them, split them open. In this bowl, I have added about a third of a cup of maple syrup. And then I threw half, I cut my bacon in half and threw the half in here and I'm letting all of that bacon absorb that ma maple syrup. Then I'm going to take the, the bacon and I'm going to put it into the brown sugar to make a mixture of this soft goat cheese with the rosemary, the garlic, and the ground ginger. I'm going to put a little bit like a, a pinch of each one of those in the already herbed soft goat cheese. The funny thing about this recipe is I used to make this in my tea room and people went crazy over it. They just loved it. I guess I just can't hardly stand figs, so I never really know if it's good or not, but people really seem to like it. So anyway, okay, so we're gonna take a slice of our bacon. You see this bacon here? And we're gonna take it and we're gonna coat it with that brown sugar. I'm gonna go on and do a couple of them so that they'll be ready to go when I stuff these. Just a little bit of brown sugar on each one of them. I've decided that those bacon slices are way too big for these appetizers, although I will need some like that. I'm cutting the half into half. Then I'm going to take my stuffed with just a little bit of and I'm gonna make sure that that's, that end that I stuffed is face down. And I'm going to put that just like that. And I'm gonna take one of these handy dandy little toothpicks here, do it just like that and set it on my baking dish there, ready to go. There's our first one. Let's do another one. Again, not too much. Take that third of a slice. Make sure that your hole there that you cut. And then straight in. Okay, 
still got these all ready to go into the oven. I'm going to put them on in the oven at about 375 for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. I'll show you what they look like when they come out. This is how they look before they go in. And then I'll show you the delight on the faces of all the women who are going to eat them. Hey everyone, I told you I had two recipes I'm gonna to take to my book club tonight. One is the figs, of course, that we just made. The next is going to be a little rendition of strawberry shortcake. It's summertime and strawberry shortcake is great. Strawberries are in high bloom. So I'm gonna show you how I kind of did a, my own rendition of a strawberry shortcake cake to take with me. Stay tuned for that. Every once in a while, you want to shortcut a dessert. You don't want to have to go to all the trouble and of baking in the hot summer. So you want a nice dessert that's not going to take much time to prepare and get together. This is the ingredients I'm using. I went to the store and I bought a couple of of uh, angel food cakes. I'm gonna cut those in half and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. Then you've got your strawberries, beautiful strawberries this time of the year. We've got some Marie's uh, glaze for strawberries. That's gonna go with those strawberries. We've got Cool Whip, Philadelphia cream cheese. You're gonna need a little bit of vanilla, not much. And I'll put this all together and show you the quickest, easiest dessert one could ever do. Okay, I'm gonna cut all the uh, top off of these and then I'm going to dice them up and I'm going to show you how I'm going to dice them up here in a second but uh, this will go in with the glaze the strawberry glaze but it's kind of important if you want a pretty dish you always want to do it prettily <laughs> is that a word prettily prettily well if it's not I'm creating a word right now but anyway you want to do it where it looks pretty that's a lot of, of cooking and having something appealing to the eye so I am taking these strawberries, these really beautiful already, beautiful strawberries. So see, I'm cutting those, I'm slicing those in very small little to go with my glaze. You want people to recognize that you took that little extra effort. You know, that's a lot about what cooking is all about, to do that little extra thing that some people just wouldn't do. To put that spice in that little extra spice okay I'm going to slice all these up and then I'm going to put them in the glaze you know I forgot to tell you all I did uh, purchase when I was getting my stuff I purchased a, a box of jello um, strawberry mix and I'm going to open that packet up when I do this glaze and put a little bit of that jello in with my glaze mixture I think it'll hurt it at all. I think it'll make it that much more strawberry. -y. There's another word I just created. Anyway, back in a while. You know, when you buy decor, when you go to Goodwill, when you thrift sh shop, when you garage shop, whenever you're looking for decor for your home, especially holiday decor, different kinds of holiday decor. Keep in mind that you can use these when you cook. I'm going to put this platter that I have as a de decoration in my lobby. I'm gonna use it to do my red, white, and blue cake. It's gonna look great, I can hardly wait. Now I've got all my strawberries sliced up there, you see. And I mentioned I had this strawberry jello packet that I purchased also. So I'm gonna open that up and I'll we'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm just sprinkling a little bit, not much. I'm not gonna use that whole packet. Save some for this weekend if we have a party to go to. I'll make the same dish. A little helpful suggestion when you're going to take something to a party or something and you have a platter such as this. And you want something to put on the bottom to make it look prettier. You don't want to just put your food on there. The Dollar Tree. I'm telling you, one of those places it has invaluable things if people would just go in there. You can purchase a whole pack of these little paper doilies. I used to use them in my in my restaurant in my tea room all the time 
but you just put them on the bottom. Got two of them there. That's where I'm gonna place my, my angel food cakes on top of there. So I'll just have too much cake and all for that. So I brought out a little red and white platter that I'm also gonna use tonight. So I'll have both of them. I'm gonna line this one as well with the little doilies. Okay, for this next part, you're gonna need a package of Philadelphia cream cheese, an eight ounce package, I believe it's eight ounces. Yes, eight ounces. You're gonna need a carton of Cool Whip. I got the extra creamy kind, carton of Cool Whip. You're gonna need a half a cup of confectioner sugar. And I'm a proponent of a little bit of vanilla. A little bit, not a lot, just about a half of a teaspoon, if that. But let's get our Philadelphia cream cheese mixture going here. I've got my mixer and it is at room temperature. I let it sit out, both it and the Cool Whip are at room temperature. Throw that in there. And we're gonna go on and get our half a cup measured out of confectioner sugar on the dot. Go on and put that in there. We're gonna let that go for a second. This is when I add, kind of mixed up pretty good, but this is when I add my vanilla. My sister got me this vanilla when she was down in Mexico. And I tell you what, if you ever get the opportunity to get Mexican vanilla, best, the best. And she, uh, whenever she goes down, she always tries to bring me back some. So here, thanks Jan. I mean, I am using a very, very little bit. There, boom, mm. don't go heavy handed. Now let's turn that back on. What that did is I had a little bit left in that bottom of the bowl, a little bit of the dry, and that vanilla got that moist again. So now it won't be so dry. see that I'm gonna show it to you you see how fluffy that mixture is see how fluffy it is that's what we want it to look like before we add the, the cool whip okay see it's all mixed together now we're going to take the whole carton the entire carton of cool whip This is going to be some good eating. This oh, is going to be, oh, see, you know, I cook like real cooks. We make mistakes. We have, you know, it's not all beautiful. It's not all done perfectly. I don't think. Oh, yeah, that is going to be some good eating, though. Okay, here we go again. Stand by. Okay, folks, that's what it's supposed to look like. See that? Real thick, heavy. Mmm. Oh, and that tastes so good. Okay, if you remember right, I told you I went to the store and I bought a couple of these square angel food cakes. You can find them in any grocery store. Got a serrated knife here. I'm going to cut straight through that. Make it two. Okay, so I have two. I'm gonna put that bottom on there. Then I'm gonna get some of this terrific. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, if that don't make you wanna slap your mama, ain't nothing gonna make you wanna. Not that anybody should slap their mama, but I'm telling you what, now. When folks cut into this, it's gonna be super, super delicious. Got a layer of it. Going over to the refrigerator. 
getting my strawberry mixture and I'm oh so delicately, and I do mean oh so delicately, going to put strawberry glaze mixture in between, not a lot. That's all I'm gonna put on there for now. And I'm gonna put the top of it on like so. Okay, I'm gonna wrap them up and um, put them in the refrigerator until I'm ready to go. But there is my very patriotic, very 4th of July, red, white, and blue, strawberry, angel food shortcake recipe. I hope everyone's gonna like it. I'll let you know. I don't know what's inside. No, there's goat, goat cheese with a, a goat cheese um, herb mixture inside. The uh, bacon is uh, maple glazed with brown sugar. It smells over great. It. So I'm back from my book club. Everybody seemed to really enjoy the um, the strawberry cake, and they really seemed to enjoy the figs. The figs went over really big. So I'm glad that I did that. Hey, folks, if you haven't already done so, please, hey, that little subscribe button right down there. Push it. Subscribe to my channel. I sure appreciate it. Till next time, I'm going to be doing a lot more cooking. I like cooking in the summertime. So I'm going to be doing a lot more cooking. Come and join me. I've uh, got a couple of other DIY projects going, and tomorrow night going to have a group of about 51 people in. I'm starting an acting class for old people. An acting class for 55 plusers, I'm going to call it Old People Acting Up. 51 people is going to be here, so I'll tell you all about it later on. Thanks so much. Come back and see us. Until the next time, this is Pam. Pamela Pace at Purely Pam saying, hey, have a great night and a great week.